Hello and welcome to the first in a series of uh, films about the standard level bonding topic in the IB chemistry course. Here we're going to look at how we can spot what type of bonding we've got in a substance. We're not going to look in depth at what these different types of bonding are. We're just going to see how we can look at the elements that go together to make a substance up to decide what type of bonding we've got. Now, there's some very simple rules we're going to use, but there's no use knowing these rules unless you know where the metals and non-metals are in the periodic table. We've looked at this before, and we mentioned the fact that there's this thing which some people call the stairway to boron, which is marked on quite a lot of periodic tables, but not on this one. To the right of the stairway are the non-metals, and to the left are the metals. The ones, the elements that are cl very, you know, uh, uh, close or adjacent to this stairway have some metal and some non-metal properties, so they're sometimes called metalloids. But we don't come across a lot of compounds that involve these elements. And if you just remember that, for the purposes of of this course, that silicon is basically treated as a non-metal, and aluminium as a metal, then you should be fine. Okay. So here come the rules. What do we decide if there are only metals present? Well, it's going to be a metal. In other words, it's got metallic bonding. This could be a pure metal, so an element like copper or gold, or it could be a mixture of metals, so an alloy like bronze. It doesn't really matter. Um, if you've only got metals present, then your bonding will be metallic. If you've only got non-metals present, then you're definitely going to have covalent bonding. What type of covalent bonding you're going to have requires a little bit more memory. Um, if your memory is terrible, then I guess you'd, uh, you'd assume that it was covalent molecular. But if your memory is a bit better than that and you can remember five substances, then you know all the covalent networks that you're expected to remember. And they are two carbons, graphite and diamond, silicon, silicon carbide, so that's a compound between silicon and carbon, and also silicon dioxide, or uh, glass or sand. We'll call it silicon dioxide. Anyway, and finally, if you've got metals and non-metals, uh, not finally, actually there's one more, metals and non-metals present, then you're going to be ionic. So things like copper chloride and magnesium carbonate are uh, combinations of metals and non-metals, and they will always have ionic bonding. Watch out for the ammonium ion, which we said before has the formula NH4+. So things like ammonium chloride, which don't appear to have a metal in, are still ionic. So any metal and non-metal combination or any ammonium ion and non-metal combination will be an ionic substance. So really, finally, now we've got the final type of bonding that we, uh, we need to be familiar with. If you're a noble gas, then your bonding will be atomic. So you'll just be single atoms without any chemical bonds between them. And it's really as simple as that when it comes to atomic bonding. If you're noble gas, then you're atomic. So there we are. Um, Hopefully, just by looking at your periodic table and deciding what kind of elements you've got, you can decide what kind of bonding is in the substance. If um, you've got any questions or comments, then feel free to post them on YouTube or to come and ask me for some help.